The purpose of this animation is to illustrate the steps required in calculating the resistance of a given conductor. Conductor resistance is dependent upon four factors. Resistance varies with the temperature of the conductor. Resistance increases as the temperature of the conductor rises. The type of material from which a conductor is made also contributes to its overall resistance. Another determining factor influencing overall resistance is the length of the conductor. Lastly, the cross-sectional area of the conductor also plays a role in determining its resistance. With respect to physical dimensions, the resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to its length and inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area. What this means is that as conductor length increases, the resistance of the conductor also increases. However, as we increase cross-sectional area, the conductor's resistance decreases. The term resistivity is used to compare the inherent resistance characteristics of a given material. The values shown in the table above represent the amount of resistance in a conductor that is one meter in length having a cross-sectional area of one square meter. As previously stated, temperature is also a determining factor for resistance. The values shown here have been measured at room temperature or 20 degrees Celsius. The resistance of a given conductor is equal to the material resistivity times the ratio of the length of the conductor to its cross-sectional area. In this relationship, R represents the resistance of the conductor in ohms, Rho represents the material resistivity in ohms per meter, L represents the conductor length in meters, and A represents the cross-sectional area in square meters. We will use a simple example to illustrate the application of this relationship. What is the resistance of a gold conductor that is 27 centimeters in length, 1.5 millimeters thick, and 0.5 centimeters wide? For this calculation, we will assume that we are asked for resistance at room temperature or 20 degrees Celsius. Begin the solution by converting all dimensions into the units specified in the relationship used to calculate resistance. The previously provided relationship requires that the length of the conductor be expressed in meters. In addition, the cross-sectional area is to be expressed in square meters, so we also want to convert the width and thickness and express them in meters to simplify the area calculation. One meter is equal to 1,000 millimeters. One meter is also equal to 100 centimeters. When considering the conversion of an area expressed in centimeters squared into meters squared, it's important to note that the area consists of 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. This means that there are 10,000 square centimeters in a single square meter. When converting from square millimeters to square meters, it's important to note that there are a thousand times a thousand, or one million, square millimeters in a single square meter. To avoid any issues with area conversions, I like to convert the dimensional values into meters first. Converting our dimensions, we arrive at a length of 0 0.27 meters, a width of 0 0.005 meters, and a thickness of 0 0.0015 meters. Once the dimensions have been expressed in meters, we calculate the cross-sectional area in meters squared. Next, we acquire the specific resistance or resistivity of the conductor material. As shown in the table provided, gold has a resistivity of 2.45 times 10 to the power of negative 8 ohms per meter at 20 degrees Celsius. Now that we have acquired the length, cross-sectional area, 
and resistivity of the conductor and express them in the appropriate units, we apply the relationship to calculate conductor resistance. We now substitute the known quantities into the relationship and proceed to solve for the conductor's resistance. The resistance of the conductor in this example is equal to 882 microohms or 0.882 milliohms.